The overall title for this series of 12 talks is 10 Building Blocks of Catholic Social Thought. I say social thought, not social teaching, because I want to take a longer view and wider focus than does the body of doctrine that we call Catholic social teaching. That term normally applies to papal and episcopal teachings, encyclicals, special pronouncements from the Vatican, and that sort of thing. That formal magisterial status is important, of course, because it gives those teaching documents special importance, and it places on the rest of us an obligation to give them special attention. I say social thought because I want to include a lot that is in our tradition that comes from less formal sources, authentically Catholic, but not officially Catholic. The writings of Dorothy Day would be an example, as would sermons of some priests who were not bishops, and wise sayings of lay Catholics who reflected on ways in which the message of the gospel and the promptings of their faith convictions might have an impact on the social order. My point simply is that thought is wider than teaching, which, in the tradition of Catholic social teaching, is usually thought to begin with Pope Leo XIII's great encyclical Rerum Novarum in 1891. Encyclical letters typically take their titles from the first few Latin words that open the letter. You can think of an encyclical as a letter that is intended to get around, to make the rounds, not just of the Catholic world, but to touch the minds and hearts of all men and women of goodwill. This particular letter, Rerum Novarum, has the English title On the Condition of the Working Classes, and that was an important consideration in 1891 when socialism was a threat to the Catholic faith and, in the minds of many, a quote-unquote solution to the struggles that workers were facing. Encyclicals tend to address questions, often called social questions, that can be answered in the light of faith. Our official teachers, the Pope and the bishops worldwide, will speak to these questions and offer principles, not specific programs, but faith-based principles that can offer guidance to the human community as it tries to work its way through the problems as it seeks to find answers to pressing social problems. There is need to connect the church's social credenda, what we believe about justice and love, for example, or what we believe Jesus expects us to be, to connect that with the church's social agenda, how we should act, what we should do to make a better world. And a helpful step in that direction is to start thinking about that time-honored expression in Catholic social thought, the social question. What is the social question in our day? For Pope Leo XIII in 1891, the social question focused on the condition of the working classes, on the right of workers to form associations, to receive a fair wage, and thus begin to save and purchase property that they could own to organize themselves into unions and other protective arrangements against assaults on their human dignity from the new industrialization and the threat of socialism. In 1967, Pope Paul VI said in an encyclical called Populorum Progressio, Today the principal fact that we must all recognize is that the social question has become worldwide. But what precisely was then and is now the question? At the most general level, I think the social question should be stated this way. How can the human community of persons and nations live together in peace, secured by justice? Let me repeat that. How can the human community of persons and nations live together in peace, secured by by justice. The protection of fundamental human dignity requires that that question be asked at all times. 
and the organization of human life requires that it be asked in all areas of human activity. Anyone concerned about integrating the church's social mission into daily life, into habits of mind, into your personal outlook, your behavior, you have to give serious thought to what form the social question might be taking today in the world around you. In family life, the social question, as I see it, is how to shore up the interpersonal commitments that make marriages permanent and thus create an environment of stability for spouses and children. But what about commitment and cooperation in the world of work? Take your pick of the most urgent or pressing social question today in the economic area. Our church puts the poor in a preferential position. We talk about an option for the poor. We talk about preferential protection for the poor. As economic life grows more complex, the danger of damage to human fulfillment and dignity rises accordingly. But the economic organization and the task it exacts can stifle human initiative. Now, this is the stuff of good social questions. Another formulation of the social question in the economic sphere would ask how we might contain the virus of materialism in the world community and in all its separate political and familial parts. In Pacem Interis, Pope John XXIII remarked that women, and I'm quoting, will not tolerate being treated as mere material instruments, but demand rights befitting a human person in domestic and public life. The contemporary workplace, I would suggest, poses threats to reduce both men and women to mere material instruments. But with an eye to women at work today, we might ask, in our effort to articulate the social question, what is the meaning of woman in any society? Why is the value of woman an issue in contemporary society? Why is it a struggle today for women to assert their rights and assume duties worthy of their full human personhood? Everyone in the Catholic faith community should have something to say about the social question, raising the right questions, forming workable answers. All of us should be concerned about that. And we should, of course, get to work on the personal task of making sure that our personal values are right, that we keep the commitments we make, that we respect life in all its forms, and that the territory between our ears and under our feet can, so far as it is in our power to choose, be marked by the reign of justice and peace. But that is not enough. We have to move outward. We have to avoid the trap of withdrawal from the fray. Every significant social question can be traced to fault lines in human institutions. Only by working within those institutions can the fault lines be repaired. Only by participation in human processes, political for the most part, can we create new institutions to provide just exchanges, promote just relationships, and provide peace? There's a sociologist of religion whose name is Robert Wuthnow. He wrote a book called After Heaven, Spirituality in America since the 1950s, and he sees spirituality to be moving in a new direction. He describes a shift from a spirituality of dwelling, with an emphasis on habitation, to a spirituality of seeking, with an emphasis on negotiation. The dwellers relate to sacred space, cathedrals, for example. 
The seekers search for sacred moments that reinforce their conviction that the divine exists, but these moments are fleeting. Rather than knowing the territory, people explore new spiritual vistas, and they may have to negotiate among complex and confusing meanings of spirituality. Now, for the seekers, rather than being in a place that is by definition spiritual, again, sacred space, a cathedral, for example, rather than being in place that is by definition spiritual, the sacred is found momentarily in experiences as different as mowing the lawn or viewing the full moon, says Wuthnow. The point I want to make here in this introduction to our series of lectures on Catholic social thought is that the faith-based spirituality must not be so interior and devotional that it neglects the exterior social needs that surround us. We cannot neglect the social questions of our time. We cannot neglect the social action required to address societal needs. Nor can we fall into the trap of separating laudable liturgical interests from social concerns, or permitting, say, our admirable pro-life concerns to be viewed as somehow in competition with our quite necessary social justice agenda. Regrettably, that happens, and it should not. An expression that you will sometimes hear is the social apostolate. Now, this means the ministry, direct or indirect, that is aimed at helping the poor escape poverty. It's aimed at protecting the weak. It tries to promote justice in all human relationships. It can be direct, the social apostolate. It can be direct assistance, like running soup kitchens and homeless shelters, or it can be indirect, like research and writing, aimed at discovering solutions to the structural injustices that permit poverty, that foster injustice in society, and, of course, tolerate war, even favor war, and accept it as part of the human condition. I like to define poverty with two words. My definition of poverty is sustained deprivation. Now, those on the front lines in the social apostolate, as well as the scholars in their libraries and dens and in their studies, they're looking at poverty and asking both the frontline activists and the reflective scholars are asking the question, when I say sustained deprivation, they're saying deprived of what and sustained by what or by whom. Pretty obvious that the poor are deprived of, of money. They're deprived of food. They're deprived of shelter, of education. You could run out the list very easily of the deprivations. But then that question, sustained by what, sustained by whom, that calls for further reflection. And those are the kind of questions Catholics should be asking. We cannot blame poverty on the poor, at least put it this way, we should not, all too often we do, blame poverty on poor people themselves. And we should not point to government as the villain in the piece, as often happens. We should not substitute blame for analysis. We're really good at doing that, particularly here in the United States. Our tendency is often to just substitute blame for analysis and try to pin the blame on somebody, but don't give any reflection to the analytical issues that have to be explored if we're going to come up with a solution.